Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are sitting comfortably in your chair in front of your screen. I'm sitting comfortably in my garden here in Denmark. I am being helped by a young scientist from my university. Uh, he's from Romania, I'm from Denmark, and you are from all over. It is a very great honor for me to accept the FME Fellowship Award. I will give a talk that is structured in two parts. In the first part, I will cover some concepts that have guided me through my life. And in the second part, I will speculate over various um, instantiations. So at one aspect of my professional life is that I have tried as a Dane first as an engineer uh, with IBM, later on as a computer scientist, to understand the meaning of all these English words that surround us. So that is what I will start covering. There is the concept of computer and computing science. Computer science, to me, is the study and knowledge of the behavior of the abstract phenomena that characterize computing. Computing science is then the study and knowledge of how to construct uh, those things. Usually, the term computer science is used to cover both. In fact, uh, one to, to distinguish out the specialty of computer science, such as I see it, uh, people then prefix the term and call it theoretical computer science. Well, I thought all science was theoretical, but anyway, I should strictly adhere to that. The second term is that of the triptych dogma of software development. And I see that there are three parts. Uh, before we can design software, we must understand the requirements. Before we can understand the requirements, we must have a reasonable grasp of the domain. So we must study and describe the domain. Over the years, computing scientists were first interested in small uh, programs, small algorithms and data structures. Many still are. Nobody really is interested in domains. Physics is only interested in the domain. Classical engineering moves from domain to, to designs. So to me, the triptych of software development uh, says that software development must proceed from domain engineering via requirements engineering to software de design. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a brand new field. Current software engineering research and practices take on a new meaning. It will take some years for this to think in. Sink in. The third term the third terms are those of method and methodology. So I shall cover four aspects. What a method is, what a methodology is, what a formal method, and a, specifically what a formal software development method is. So first, the term method. So by, a, and here I read from the screen, by a method, I understand a set of principles for selecting and applying a number of procedures and techniques using tools in order to construct an artifact. What do we mean by principles? Such examples are abstraction principle, divide and conquer, the principle of narrating, telling the story and formalizing it hand in hand. By a procedure, we have some examples that we treat 
endurance before perdurance, as you will see, we will come back to endurance and perdurance later on. We will treat external qualities before internal qualities. We will treat unique identification before mere reality and mere reality before attributes. Some techniques are model-oriented specification, formal concept analysis, and invariance. Some tools are the specification languages, analysis prompts, design prompts, programming languages, etc. By methodology, I understand the study and knowledge of one or more methods. So now a method by itself becomes the object that we study. Few are interested in understanding principles, in elucidating principles, techniques, and tools. Most focus on theoretical computer science. By a formal method, I understand a method whose principles, techniques, and tools have a formal foundation in mathematics. So software engineering is a formal mathematics-based endeavor. It is not primarily a social or psychological endeavor. Formal software development, I understand one in which one or more specification languages have a formal syntax, a formal semantics, and a formally defined proof system. So, to me, the software engineers that I have educated over 40 years must have a must be reasonably fluent in mathematics, especially in discrete mathematics and mathematical logic, but also know about partial differential equations and all that. This was the first part. So in the second part of the talk, I will reflect on some issues. The first such issue is the distinction that I make between informatics and information technology. To me, informatics is a fusion of applied mathematics, computer and computing science, and software engineering, as it consists of domains, requirements, and software design. Information technology, in contrast, is a fusion of nanophysics, electronics, computer and communication hardware, sensors, actuators, etc. So we are talking about two universes. To me, informatics is a universe of intellectual quality, characterized by better logically and space-time efficiency. Better as fit for purpose, appropriate and meeting user expectations, logically comprehensive and correct. Informatics issues re remain invariant, more or less, over time. In contrast, information technology is a universe of material quality or quantity. To me, that universe is characterized by bigger and smaller, faster and slower, costly and inexpensive, and new technology is driven. So information technology, IT, changes dramatically. Some distinguishing characteristics is that the products of informatics satisfies laws of logic, whereas the products of information technology satisfies laws of physics. A second, slightly more speculative issue is that of physics versus informatics. So in information technologies, Switching circuit technologies form the basis for von Neumann computer hardware architectures and dominated the early emphasis on algorithms. Storage technologies form the basis for database advances in computing and led to big data. Telecommunication technologies form the basis for distributed parallel computing and dominates current emphasis on the internet. 
Informatics, however, we see that in informatics, we see, however, that algorithms, databases, and telecommunications emerge as natural to tools in seeking computable domain software. And now comes a slightly speculative statement, namely that I claim that domain science and engineering turns our informatics endeavor in the opposite reverse way of our informatics information technology endeavors. The th third part now, the third section is about programming languages, from programming languages to domains. My own travel through my professional life has been from the formal definition of programming languages to the formal definition of domains. A somewhat overlooked fact is that from a formal description of ADA to an almost formal development of the ADA compiler in eight stages of development with each stage being based on the theory. No, don't worry, you cannot read this diagram, but it just says that there are many steps in the developing of a compiler, only the low road, the horizontal row at the bottom is the actual coding of the compiler, whereas all the other boxes designate steps of development. Well, each of these steps being supported by a theory. Now, from programming language which you know of to domains which is new to you, here I give a definition, a characterization. So by a domain, I read it up for you. By a domain, we shall understand a rationally describable segment of a discrete dynamics segment of a human-assisted reality of the world. It's solid and fluid entities, natural and artifactual, and its living species, plants and animals. Examples of domains are those listed here, transport, pipelines, manufacturing, markets, etc. By a domain language, we shall understand the verbs and nouns uttered by that domain's workers and the sequence in which the verbs and nouns are then used. By, in a descript, domain description, nouns, roughly speaking, denote endurance, things that do not change, adverbs, things that stand for things that change. Endurance are phenomena that can be observed and conceived as complete things at no matter which point in time you look at it. This chair I sit on is an endurant, remains an endurant. And perdurant are phenomena for which only a fragment exists at any one time. For example, my talk, my presentation here. Within endurance, we focus first on the external quantities, qualities, solid or fluid, atomic or composite, and then on the internal endurant qualities, namely their unique identification, their meriality, their relation to one another, and the attributes, the properties that otherwise give them flesh and blood. Ladies and gentlemen, these are new concepts. The entities, the external qualities, the internal qualities. In the fourth part, just on this one slide here, I cover a current term called method prisons. So some prominent software engineering scientists utter method prisons. I think they are confusing two issues, method and design. Design involves artistic, scientific, and or engineering innovation and creativity. In describing a domain, we need not be creative or innovative. We must be like physicists, accept the world as it is. So in domain engineering, there is no room for design. 
in requirements engineering, there's a lot of room for both method and design. My almost last point is that of the role of philosophy. You have heard about the philosophy of mathematics, a philosophy of physics as first uh, approached or broached by Niels Bohr and Einstein, the philosophy of biology, of literature, and so on. With my current publications, I am now embarking on the philosophy of computing science. This is based on the works of a Danish philosopher, Kaiser Lander. Space and time are considered logically inevitable. This is in contrast to Immanuel Kant's view. Newton's laws of physics can be transcendentally deduced. And with an extended notion of transcendental deduction, uh, we can morph endurance into perdurance. Endurance possess external qualities and internal qualities. Perdurance give, are given then by transcendental deduction. You may have read and li liked Robert Lee Frost's poem uh, in which the term the road not taken appears. I will leave this poem for you to study and find yourself. I have not delved into established computing or computer science fields. Rather, I have staked out new fields. First with others, as you can see, my colleagues in Vienna in the 1970s, and then alone in the 1980s when I took the initiative to raise and a different view of formal software engineering. And then from to till today in the area of domain science and engineering. First, I collected these thoughts during my year at, in Japan. Uh, and finally, I have published this book. This is being published this month as you listen to this talk. So those years, that endeavor has sometimes been lonely, but it has always been exciting. So I want to sum up. So it's been 60 wonderful years of computing. IBM was a great company to work for in the 60s and the 70s. Academe and retirement became my most creative workplaces. At my university, at Dansk Datematik Center, at UNIVIST, and through guest lectureships around the world. So thank you very much for listening to me today.